Hello everybody and welcome back to Irrationalics. Today I want to talk about uh, a very beautiful and deep theorem uh, in elementary number theory. Its name is Bertrand Postulate, which is not even a postulate but an honest theorem. And its statement goes like this, so we can take a natural number n, we can double it, so we have 2n, then we can always find the prime between n and 2n. Let us see some examples. Let us take n equals 3, so 2n is equal to 6, and so we can find, for example, the prime 5 between 3 and 6. But the very beauty of this result is that this is true for every n natural number. In general, proof of deep theorems about prime numbers requires a lot of background, technical background, in order to be accomplished, for example, complex analysis, Fourier analysis, and so on. But today I've decided to talk about this proof because in its nature it's very elementary. So it requires only an easy amount of uh, knowledge about uh, easy combinatorics and uh, arithmetics. This proof is due to Paul Erdos, which is uh, maybe one of the most famous mathematicians of uh, the last century. Here is a picture. And uh, the crazy fact is that uh, he proved this theorem when he was only 19 years old. Okay, now that we have clear in mind what the theorem is, let us see how the proof works. So, let's follow me. In order to prove this beautiful theorem, we have first to take into account three keys lemma, which I will put here in a list. So, let us start with the first key lemma, which is a fairly easy application of the binomial uh, Newton theorem. If we take the binomial expansion of a plus b to the n, this can be written as the sum from k equals 0 to n of our binomial coefficient n choose k times what? times a to the k times b to the n minus k. Now we want uh, a fairly easy bound uh, about uh, the binomial coefficient of the form 2n choose n. So what we do here, we substitute a and b with 1 and we take n and change it uh, to 2n. So a equals 1 and b equals 1 and we change n to 2n. So if we substitute these numbers into here, we have 1 plus 1 to the 2n is equal to what? a and b are 1, so 1 to the k times b uh, times 1 to the n minus k is exactly 1. So here we have only the sum from k equal to 0 to 2n of the binomial coefficient 2n to z. Now we can break up this sum into two pieces, like this. So the first two pieces is when k is equal to 0 and k is equal to 2n. So 2n choose 0 and 2n choose 2n is exactly 1. And so this piece is exactly 2. Then we have the last piece of our sum. So we have the sum from k equals 1 to 2n minus 1 of our binomial coefficients, 2n choose k. But this is exactly equal to what? to 2 to the 2n, or 4 to the n. Now, all of these summons are exactly at most 2n to n, which is the biggest among these summons. So, this can be bounded by 2n, because we have 2n minus 1 summons here and the 2 here, times 2n to z. So, dividing both sides of this inequality by 2n, we have, here we have 2n, we have exactly our first key lemma. So, 4 to the n over 2n is at most the binomial coefficient 2n to z. Now, the second key lemma is a fairly easy application of the Legendre formula. 
and uh, we want uh, uh, to compute the highest power of a prime number dividing the binomial coefficient to n to z. So, let us see how it works. The relation formula enables us to compute uh, exactly the highest power of a prime dividing a factorial. So, we take p a prime number, we take n factorial, and we want to know what is the highest power of p dividing n factorial. So alpha such that p to the alpha is exactly the highest power dividing n factorial. Now this is fairly easy. Why? Well, because we can write n factorial as an iterated product of uh, numbers from 1 to n. And in this range we can compute how many multiples of primes uh, compare. So here we have uh, exactly n over p, maybe round down, which is exactly the numbers of multiples of p. But here we have also to take into account uh, the highest power of p dividing uh, numbers from 1 to n. So we have also to add stuff like n over p squared floor, which is exactly the numbers of multiples of p squared between 1 and n, and so on for every power of p. So the final formula is exactly alpha equal to the sum from i uh, less or equal than 1 of the floor of n over p to the i. Note that this is not an infinite sum, because for some i, p to the i is bigger than n, and so this from a certain i um, to infinity is zero. Now we want to use this formula in order to compute the highest power of a prime, dividing the binomial coefficient to n to z. So here we have p a prime, we want to know alpha such that p to the alpha is exactly the highest power dividing our binomial coefficient. Well, in this case we can write our binomial coefficient to n to n as the ratio between 2n factorial and n factorial times n factorial. This is by definition of binomial coefficient. And so our alpha can be computed at the sum of i greater or equal than 1 of the floor of 2n over p to the i minus 2n over p to the i floor. So this uh, is exactly the application of the Legend formula in this situation. But now we can bound this stuff and we say that this is at most 1 for every i. In fact, this is strictly less than 2n over p to the i minus 2 times what? This is a floor, so we can use the bound n over p to the i minus 1. And if you do the computation, this is exactly 2. And so we have that every term in parentheses contributes for at most 1 in this sum. And when this term is 0, well, it is 0 when p to the i is greater than 2 to the n. So what we have finally, we have that p to the alpha is at most 2n. So from here and from here, we have that p to this particular alpha is at most 2n. And this proves the second key lemma. Let us see the third and the last key lemma. Let us finally show the proof of the third and last key lemma. So we want to bound the primordial function. So the function that computes exactly the product of primes less or equal than a given x. And we want to show that this function is at most 4 to the x minus 1. Let us see that without loss of generality, we can assume that x is a prime number, so we can show that not only it works for x, but for 
q a prime number. So let us prove this by induction. If we fix q to be 2, so the first and only even prime number, this is trivially true because this is exactly 2 less or equal than 4, which is true. Now let us assume uh, that q is an odd prime number, so the form 2m plus 1. Now by induction, assume that this is true for all the numbers between 2 and 2m. Now we can consider our product of prime between uh, 2 and 2m plus 1 and we can break this product into two pieces. So this is exactly the first piece we can take p less or equal than n plus 1 and here as a second piece we take the product of primes running from n plus 1 to 2n plus 1. Now this by induction is let us circulate is at most 4 to the n because here we have n plus 1. Now for this we can make this trick which is very beautiful in my opinion. So let us erase briefly here and we say that this is certainly less or equal than the binomial coefficient 2n plus 1 to n. But why this is true? Well, this prime divides exactly this binomial coefficient, which is an integer, because p divides 2n plus 1 factorial, but does not uh, divide n factorial. But this now is a summand, which is equal exactly to 2n plus 1 over n plus 1. But now, finally, these two, which are equal, are also summons of the binomial expansion, as we have seen before, of 1 plus 1 to the 2n plus 1. So both of these are at most 2 to the 2n, because we have divided by 2, because these two are equal. So these, finally, the second part is at most 2 to the 2n. And so finally we have that 4 to the n times 2 to the 2n, which is exactly 4 to the 2n. And this proves our third and last key lemma. Perfect! Now we have all the ingredients in order to finish our beautiful proof. But first let me make two simple observations. The first is that if a prime number is greater than square root of 2n and p divides our binomial coefficient 2n to n, then the highest power of p dividing 2n to n is exactly 1. So we can put a second mark. This follow briefly from the second key lemma. Now, the second and last observation tells us that uh, there are no primes strictly between 2 thirds n and at most n that divides 2n to n. So, if p is a prime which is strictly bigger than 2 thirds n and at most n, then p does not divide our actor, so our binomial coefficient 2 and 2 n. This is simple uh, because if we take uh, our first inequality we have that 2 n is strictly less than 3 p so uh, the only multiples of p that compare in the factorization of 2 n factorial uh, are exactly p and 2 p dividing 2 n factorial. But since p is at most n, we have that, so p is at most n, this implies that exactly that p divides n factorial. And since uh, the denominator of our binomial coefficient uh, is uh, made up of uh, 2 n factorials, 
this tells us that in the denominator compare exactly to um, times p. So p divides n factorial, let me write like this, p divides n factorial. So if we take the ratio, so if we take our binomial coefficient, our p and 2p cancel out with our p and p. And so there are no primes like this that divides uh, the binomial coefficient 2n to z. Now we are finally really done. So we can take as our first step our 4 to the n over 2n. But this, we have seen, is at most our binomial coefficient. And our binomial coefficient, we can bound it as the product of primes dividing it. So we have our products of prime which are at most the square root of 2n. Now we take the product of primes, which goes from the square root of 2n up to uh, 2 third n, and here, since there are no primes in this range, we can multiply also of primes which are uh, between n and 2n n and 2n. Now, let us look uh, first at the last part. So, if by contradiction uh, there exists an n such that uh, the Bertrand postulate is false, this part tells us that uh, there are no primes between n and 2n, so this is exactly 1. Now, this part, instead, we can bound it by, now p compares to some power alpha which contributes uh, at most uh, to n by our second key lemma. And how many primes we have? Well, we have at most uh, square root of 2n primes. And so this is at most uh, 2n to the square root of 2n. Now this uh, we can use uh, our third key lemma and we can bound with the primordial function of primes up to 2 third n. So this is at most our 4 to the 2 third n. And so if the Bertrand postulate is false for some n, this n has to satisfy exactly this inequality for n over 2n. But now, a simple computation, so we can put uh, this inequality, for example, in Wolfram alpha, but we can check it also by hand with some clever substitution, uh, shows us that uh, this, in, in fact, is false for n greater or equal than 4000. But now we have finished this proof, if we are able to find for any n less or equal than 4000, a prime which uh, is exactly between n and 2n. So, let us finish. Finally, we can use uh, a very famous trick called Landau trick, which uh, Herdos used in his proof, and it goes like this. So, we have our n less than 4000, and we want for every interval of the form n to n to find a prime number contained in this interval. But now we are able to exhibit, thanks to Landau, an explicit list of prime numbers between 2 and 4001, such that at each step the corresponding prime is smaller than twice uh, the primes before it. So this proves uh, our Bertrand postulate. I will let uh, here the list of Landau, which is pretty cool in my opinion, and this finally ends our tour to this beautiful proof. The proof is now finished. I hope uh, you have enjoyed like I enjoyed this beautiful proof. We will see very soon other proofs which in my opinion are very beautiful and deep, and like we say in Italian, ciao ciao!